What is going on guys, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com. In the last couple of videos, we looked at how to download the essential tools and essentially the software packages in order to get started in PLC programming. Now, the obvious question, and as I had expected, that was uh, brought up immediately, was essentially how to get those packages running and essentially being able to create the, a virtual PLC on your machine in order to start programming some ladder logic. So today we're gonna be looking at how to set that up, how you can get your your first program going how you can run RS Logics 500 emulate and how to run your first uh, piece of ladder logic on your machine without any further delay let's get started all right so the first thing that we're going to do is launch our RS Lynx classic and from here you will find the different drivers which essentially allow you to communicate with different PLCs and I made an extensive video on how to use those drivers to communicate with a real PLC however you will need to create a specific driver which is going to communicate with the package known as RS Logics 500 emulate and that is the virtual environment which essentially will host your virtual PLC in order to do that we're going to like I've said open the software first of all you're going to click on communications and then configure drivers from this menu you can like I've said create many different drivers but we're going to be interested in this SLC 500 emulator driver so you're going to click on that and you're going to select add new you can give it any name that you desire just for it to be more recognizable. But since you're going to have only uh, one instance, most likely of this driver, I would just uh, leave it as such. You can hit OK. Now, the next thing that is going to pop up is the station number. So the station number is essentially going to be for your uh, computer in this case. So I'm going to just give it a 00, zero which is just the default station here. And I'm not going to give it any name. That's just fine. I'm going to hit OK. Once I close out of this window, you will notice that there's going to be a new driver which has been uh, configured here. And as you can see, the 00, zero slot which we've configured in that menu is going to be assigned to our workstation. So this is fine. This is essentially the computer saying that it is on that same network. The next thing that we need to do is essentially open RS Links, sorry, RS Logics and create a piece of software which is going to run in emulate so of course you need some kind of a file which is going to be executed within your virtual plc and it is going to be created through rs logics 500 once once the software opens up we will be able to select a new plc and uh, configure some of the settings so here i'm going to create a new file so i'm going to hit file a new and from the processors i'm going to browse down to a uh, Micrologix 1100 Series B. This is a processor that I've owned and I've showcased this processor on this channel. So just to remain uh, consistent, we're going to leave it at that. We're going to give it a name. So EMU 500 test TE, I guess you cannot put more uh, characters into the name. We're going to leave this as is for now. We're going to take care of the communication a bit later. I'm going to hit on OK. And that's our file. So this is just a very blank piece of logic, which doesn't contain anything out of the box, of course. And we can we can leave it as such for now. What we're going to do is going to hit File, Save As. And we're going to save this file in the RS Logix 500 environment. And it can keep that name. That's fine. Let's click on Save. And at this point, what we can do is open the emulation environment. So I'm going to type in Emulate and it's going to be RS Logics Emulate 500. I do get an error, which uh, is happening every time I launch the software, but it hasn't affected my uh, software. So do keep that in mind. Maybe it will yours, but uh, we're going to hit on File, Open, and we're going to open the exact same file that we had uh, set up in the RS Logics 500 environment. So here, that's, that's our file. We're going to hit on Open. Uh, must be compiled before it can be emulated. So that's one thing I forgot. So let's go back in here so we can verify the project. Save it once again. And that should be good. Let's try that once again. File open. Emulate. And as you can see, it's given us a uh, pane which essentially allows us to uh, create certain debug features. But what we need to specify here and what's the most important is the station number for the PLC. So through this uh, emulate package, you can essentially simulate multiple PLCs and it's important to give them distinct uh, locations. And it's not gonna let you uh, pick the same one anyways. So I'm going to put this one right here, hit on okay. And as you can see, 
that's the program on station one that being said it's still not running essentially the plc is kind of a in a dormant state so we're going to set it to run and at this point what you will notice or maybe you've seen this in the background is that in rs links uh, the Micrologics 1100 series has appeared in the back. And what we can now do if we go back to RS Logics 500, since we are technically offline with the software, we can now go online with the PLC that's running in the uh, virtual environment. To do so, we're going to select comms, system comms. And from the system comms, we should be able to browse to the same driver which we've configured in the uh, RS Links environment, and I have that right here. If I select the uh, the processor or the virtual processor, I can definitely go online with it. And as you can see, by this rotating ladder, which is a very, um, how to say it, iconic tool, which was introduced by Alan Bradley, it tells us that we're online and we definitely have this remote run signal and from here on out you can essentially start creating rungs of logic so if you click on this uh, rung you can add a new rung and you can for example create different bits and if i remember remember correctly it's going to be a little bit different than on a real plc because technically you're not really compiling you're essentially compiling but then you need to re-download the software on the uh, emulator so let's look at that for one second so we're going to have a couple of outputs so let's use output zero for example and i'm just going to use that as an example to create some new logic and we're going to use the the zeroth input as well let's put that in so we have an input we have an output and we can certainly verify the project but what you will see is that the online edit resources cannot be obtained from processor because you don't have necessarily a processor which is running on that environment so what you need to do is so first of all we're going to verify the project and everything's okay now we're going to save the file once again um Okay, so I guess we have to do this in a slightly different way. I apologize for that. So we have to go online with the, from the processor. We have to add a logic. Let's see here. So it's a slightly different uh, environment than what you would see on a real processor because you can make online uh, edits with a live processor without any problems. But we're going to verify the project like so. We're going to save the file, hit on OK. And what we're going to do is essentially halt our uh, test and we're going to essentially reopen the file that we've created once again and we're going to give it a place of one so let's see here so file close file open emulate one run and then we can go back online with the processor in order to um to test our logic let's see here so go online once again okay so we're back online we're done with the edits so that's one thing that you need to be aware of this environment is going to be a little bit different than uh what you'd find on the plc but of course once you have the logic going everything is as you would expect so you can of course toggle the bits as you can see that's your input that you're toggling and it's toggling the output just like you would on a real plc you can toggle it back you can force uh, bits just like you would on a real PLC as you can see there's forces installed so everything works as expected but loading files and essentially updating the live PLC is going to be a little bit different than what you're used to if you're working with a live PLC but no nevertheless this gives you a very good idea on how to set up the software be able to start programming online and you can follow a lot of my other tutorials which you can find by the way in the link or the, in the description down below so I encourage you to look at those as well and I'll see you guys next time Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.